This is day 19. It closes the toe now. We'll make make the this lip. This allows it to fit a little tighter. Fit, okay. These are a little bit loose. So rather than felting the hole, we can trim the toe a little shorter. So you're not closing the diameter of it? No, I just trim it shorter and then comb it. Because yesterday Eric was closing some of them to the strings. Yeah, put, yeah that was to uh, limit the air. <coughs> These, most of the principles and flutes in the organs organ are open toe, so the wind pressure determines everything. Okay. Because as he was closing it, that was going to lessen the wind pressure. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure I remember that. So that fits nicely. Yeah, it's like having a custom pressure for every pipe. Well, that really made a difference just then. Yeah. See how that rocks a little bit? What happens is that these are custom fit in the shop, and we plane the rack boards clean of all the mess from burning the racks and then yeah. the uh, it gets together and things change just slightly a bit. We might screw down a little tighter. This is a very elegant way to correct the problem. <laughs> nice and perfect fit. Loose. Fortunately, it's just a few of these mid sized pipes. Yeah. Okay. Oops. So I use two different sized, two different tapers on the cones. This toe cone is a bit steeper. The other one is more shallow. Okay. Good. That's good. And just a bit more on this one. Now I've noticed that the pipe that you're working on now, like it's like every other one is. Uh, Right. I'm being really articulate. Now. They're not really in order, are they? No, no. You have a tall one, short one, tall one, short one. Is that? Well, there is an order to the madness. Oh, I know that. The pedal here, we've got all the octaves clustered. So okay. here we've got low B and tenor B. Low A, tenor A. Okay. And that's done to facilitate the Subas Borden borrow at an octave. So one set of pipes plays at 16 and 8. But that's the only borrowing that happens in the wind chest. Actually, the, the 16 principle and the 8 foot principle are done the same way. But the other advantage is that the reeds, you know, this is low G, this is tenor G, the Zauna, are clustered and the shorter pipe fits nicely where the bigger pipe is narrow. So you can okay. fit, it, the pipe, yeah. fit more pipes in less space. Okay. And then it would appear that later some kind of a mixture is going to go across this yep, guy? that's the mixture. And each note here is clustered. And 
clustering of pipes makes them kind of pull into tune a little bit better. Okay. But it's not absolutely necessary. It just happened to work best for this layout. Yeah, Bruce was showing us where the uh, where the pipes are cascading up and down. They're really a third apart. Yeah. Because you're C side, C sharp side, and then as they go back and forth on the. Yeah, we think that major thirds arrangement is a little bit better because the whole tones, being far apart, don't fight so much. And the um, clusters of or towers of major third arrangements are easier to reach around if you need to reach the front of the chest. Okay. You can see that over here where we've got um, a major third tenor arrangement and a major third treble. So I can reach through here to the front of the tenor. Okay. Quite low, and that includes over the reeds. And it's just kind of an efficient way to lay things out. And my goodness, that means Eric's got to come in here and remove all these tapes and solder all the caps? Yeah, once these are tuned. He's done that already on the good act here. Okay. It looks much neater. Oh, so those some are Eric's handiwork right there where we were seeing the soldering yesterday. And that so means that the tuning is more or less permanent. Yeah. And just very fine adjustments are done with the ears, turning the ears in and out. And that's done here. You can see the, the ear can be bent in a little bit or out a little bit. And that changes the pitch very slightly. Okay. So the advantage is that this is an absolute tight seal that will never come loose. All right. And there's no canisters to slide up and down and go out of tune. But it also means that you've got to be pretty sure about how the organ's tuned, both in terms of temperament, tuning system, right. and in terms of pitch. Right. And then, of course, the, the need for a temperature range to be maintained. Well, right. the main thing is that we tune these at the right pitch for a particular temperature. And if it gets hot, then we have to adjust up, upward in pitch. Some of your, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the chart. The, the chart yep. over here. Yep. Yeah. So Bruce has put together a temperature compensation chart. So at 70, 71, we set it at 440. Well, normally you would say 70 degrees would be 440, but we're using the Kellner tuning system. So okay. this is the pitch the frequency for A, and in the calendar temperament, it's not close to the um, equal tempered A. It's a little bit, a little bit off. So what we do is we figure out the average for all the notes, and it works out that for 71 degrees, 440 is the best setting. And then the tuner will go from there. Lots to think about. You keep answering the question. It's not just a matter of plugging it in and playing, is it? No. <laughs> this is gorgeous. And that is cool. Well, thank you.